Thanks, Paul. Uh, so we're moving along great, and our next speech is going to be done by Justin from We Are Change. Thanks, Justin. I'm a Sasquatch, so I need it up a little higher than uh, some of our vertically challenged uh, Get close. friends here. Good afternoon, Victoria. Are we feeling free yet? No? Would you like to know how you can get free? Yeah. Let's have a show of hands. How many people here today know that we have a constitution? Okay, a few do. How many people have read our constitution? Okay, not quite as many. Did you know that our constitutional... Uh, sorry. Did you know that there are constitutionally guaranteed unalienable rights in our constitutional <laughs> constitution that are being trampled daily by the governments and agents of Canada? One of the keys to freedom is knowing what your rights are and how to enforce your God-given constitutionally guaranteed inherent rights. There are two very important sections of our constitution that I'd like to bring out to you today. One is found at section 52, where it states, the Constitution of Canada is the supreme law of Canada, and any law that is inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution is, to the extent of the inconsistency of no force or effect. So that means that if you're going uh, up against authority, you have to challenge their authority, because they're going to tell you well, this is a law, you have to follow it when it's not a law. It may be a statute, a regulation, but it's not a law. Next section of the charter that I'd like to draw to your attention is section 32. This one's good. The application of charter. This charter applies to the Parliament and Government of Canada in respect of all matters within the authority of Parliament, including all matters relating to the Yukon Territory and Northwest Territories, and to the legislature and government of each province, in respect of all matters within the authority of the legislature of each province. So the Constitution is the supreme law of Canada, and no law can be written that abridges or abrogates the rights guaranteed in the Canadian Constitution. And Section 32 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms states that it only applies to the government and its agents. So it doesn't apply to the rest of us, right? Right. Wrong. Oh. <laughs> when you applied for your social insurance number, you dutifully checked off the box that said Canadian resident, thinking that it meant you were legally domiciled in Canada. But according to Black's Law Dictionary, 9th edition, a resident can mean resident agent. So you gave the government the ability to presume that you are an agent of theirs and subject to all their petty acts and statutes. Likewise for your driver's license, your care card, your passport, and any other government issued identification or benefit card. So you've given the, the government the ability to presume that you work for them. So how does that knowledge help us claim our freedom, you ask? I say claim because we have never been free. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe is quoted as saying, None are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. Wake up, people. We are de facto slaves. So we have to claim our freedom by learning what our rights are and not be afraid to stand up for our God-given, unalienable, inherent rights and know that we have been lied to, we have been bullied, and we have been robbed by the so-called authorities and call them out for the criminals that they really are. The powers that be are quickly becoming the powers that were. And they will try to tell you that it is law until you push back and say, no, I do not consent. Then they back down and go away, but not before. Take back your power by standing up to the tyranny 
that is our present reality. Look around the world, you can see it for yourself. Stop watching TV, that zaps your power. The world over, people are not free, yet the people of Iceland took back their financial freedom by jailing the criminal politicians and the banksters. And they told the international banksters to take their fraudulent derivative debt and stuff it. The country of Iceland is on a better footing economically than any other country in the world. We have to do the same thing. So get to know and stand up for your rights. They're in our constitution. They're in our charter and rights and freedoms. We have the right to travel. We have the right to commerce. We have the right to be free of being molested by the government and its agents. If you see someone being harassed by the so-called authorities, get out your damn camera and start videotaping it because you might be the next one that's being harassed by the so-called authorities and maybe somebody will haul out their camera and record what they're doing to you. We have to stand together to fight tyranny whenever and wherever it rears its ugly head. So in closing, I'd just like to say, wake up, know your rights, learn how to enforce them. And a good way to learn is to come out to our We Are Change Victoria meeting every Sunday night at 7 p.m. at Gorgeous Coffee on Gorge Road at Tillicum. We're also doing video screenings at the same location. Check it out at wearechange.org. Uh, sorry, wearechangevictoria.org or our We Are Change uh, Victoria Facebook page for times and what's being shown. So enjoy the rest of today. Hopefully Mother Nature gives us a bit more sunshine and uh, be free. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Justin. My name is Greg Hill. I'm the co-chair for We Are Change Victoria. It's an honor to be here for the third annual Freedom and Solutions Rally. Yeah. I'd like to introduce our next speaker, hailing from Vancouver, British Columbia. He is a champion of freedom and liberty, Mr. Jamie Scott. Thank you for coming.